lights, camera, action. I'm Danosity, intro, done. So I haven't been on here in a while, as you may have noticed, and that's mostly because I've only been posting schoolwork and I've been very busy with school-related activities. But I'm back at it, don't you worry. And today I'm going to be talking a little bit about rat anatomy. Before we get started, I'm going to introduce each of my rats. It's the same set as is in my intro video, but I'm just going to do a quick little reintroduction because, well, it's a few months later and they're a little bit bigger and older. First up, we have Ogden. Ogden here is half wild, I presume. He is two years old and he has a goody fur and it's like normal hair fur and his ears are centered as well. We also have Bracken Reed. Bracken Reed, as you may remember, is the boss. He's very big now. He has a Dumbo Rex, so his ears, as you can see, are on the side of his head, and his hair is very long and curly. And my dad isn't allergic to him, so that's really nice to have. He is also two years old. You probably remember Apollo. He is also a Dumbo Rex. And he is one year old. Last but not least, we have Hermes. Hermes is Apollo's brother. He is one year old as well, and he is also a Dumbo Rex. Filming with the rats in the daytime is a little bit difficult because rats naturally are nocturnal, although pet rats, like Hermes here, are crepuscular which means that they are most active during the twilight hours, so in the morning and in the evening. And while he's still nice and calm, we will start off with a very easy part to identify. The face. On his face, he has cheeks. Hermes also has nostrils on his nose for breathing, and you can also get a good look at his mouth there. And he also has whiskers outside of a rat's mouth is really long and slender in most cases. Ogden does have a rather round face for a rat. Inside his mouth he's got a tongue, which he uses for lots of kisses. The teeth have yellow enamel, which is a little bit different than our white enamel. Rats have ears. We all can see that on the outside. Ogden being a more traditional, <laughs> I guess that's one way of putting it, rat has ears on the top of his head. Whereas rats like Bracken Reed have ears on the side of their head, because he is a Dumbo rat. His ears are also much wider. This right here is the head, behind the head, as we all can probably guess, is his neck. It spans from about here to here. So Bracken Reed has a fairly normal sized neck, but Ogden here has a very, very short neck. He's very egg shaped. <laughs> Rats' forearms which he is reaching at me with right now and holding my finger with, they often use for eating and grabbing things. These forearms have almost human-like hands. Rats also have a thorax. It's their chest. So from about here to here. And of course, from like here where my finger is to about down here, is their tummy or the abdomen. And all that together, the thorax and the abdomen, makes what's called the trunk of the rat's body. And I think that's really cute. Next, we'll move on to the back legs or the hind limb. Their back legs are a little bit bigger. They're good for standing on their hind legs if necessary, and they grip onto things as well. They are also a lot of the strength when they run. Some rats, they hop like bunnies, usually when they're very excited, so their back legs are very important to be strong. A lot of rats, as they get older, especially the males, will get a larger butt. <laughs> their abdomen will get larger, and they'll be very back heavy. Now, here comes the one that a lot of people are uncomfortable with. The tail. Rats have a hairless tail. So we've been told. But if you look closely, it actually has little tiny hairs on it. And that's to help it grip onto things. It's not a prehensile tail, but it does help them a lot with balance. Rats also need the hairless tail 
to help dissipate heat. It helps cool them down so that they don't get too hot. Another thing to help keep rats nice and cool is if you have a stone block. <laughs> I bought a chinchilla cooling stone and um, my rats use it quite frequently to help keep themselves nice and cool. It's worth whatever it costs you. One of the last things that I want to talk about is how to tell the difference between a male rat and a female rat. The big difference between male and female rats is their genitals. So I'm going to give you a quick tip on how to figure it out. Black and Reed here is going to help me with this demonstration. So you have a rat and you don't know if it's a male or a female. The best way to tell is to flip them on their back. If they've got these big honking testicles, guaranteed that's a boy. If they don't, you've got yourself a girl. As you can see, those testicles are huge. Why are male rats' testicles so big? They're kind of gross, but that's just boys. So why does Bracken right here have such big testicles? Well, it's because rats breed a little bit differently than humans do. One female rat, for example, will breed with multiple different males. And the male with the bigger balls is more likely to have more sperm and therefore more likely to get a female pregnant. I don't breed my rats, but they're still gonna have big balls because of evolution. Thank you so much for watching. As always, this has been Danosity. Make sure to like, subscribe, and we will see you in the next video. Isn't that right, Apollo?